because our families came from Mexico, from Central America, all over Latin America, looking for the American dream, and we got the American nightmare as youth. So, you know, we organized the Brown Berets to fight back for our, our rights to fight against racism. We coined the whole slogan about Moreno es bonito, you know, black is beautiful, Moreno es bonito, be proud of who we are. <laughs> Welcome back to the zoo. We got a very special guest here because I believe that history is very important. If you don't learn history, you're bound to repeat it. And we've been repeating a lot of history lately. Right. I got Carlos Montes, um, who is part of the <laughs> Chicanex <laughs> Moratorium, uh, right. which is uh, it's now we're taping this uh, right before it happens. It's actually happening this weekend as we're taping. But the truth is, this is going to be broadcast after it happens. Mm. Yeah, so we'll just talk yeah. about you know what's behind it. Um, so first of all, let's go back. Instead of talking mm. about what's happening right now, okay. let's talk about the original Chicano Moratorium and sure. what came of that. What was that? No, the original Chicano Moratorium in, the, in 1969 and the 70s was to protest against the war in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but specifically the high casualty rate of our young Chicanos in the war in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We were put in the front lines. We were killed. My homies that would come back traumatized, they would show me their, their albums of all the atrocities they committed, you know because we were faced by the draft. So we had a high casualty rate. We're saying uh, the war is here at home against racism and police abuse and not, not in Vietnam. Wow. So yeah, wow. no, absolutely. So the, you know, uh, we, we decided to protest and, and uh, you know, demand end the war in Vietnam, bring the troops home, bring all the troops home. Right. Now it began, the Chicano moratorium began as a group of, of Chicano students, right? And you guys were protesting, you guys were staging protests at various places, but it culminated in a violent event when the, right. uh, uh, give us a little bit about that. It was a protest right. that ended up having the LAP uh, Sheriff's Department. Right, the Sheriff's LAPD, in coordination with the FBI, and Edward Hoover <laughs> attacked the 30,000 peaceful rally at uh, Laguna Park, which is now Salazar Park. Mm -hmm. People were having music, folklorico, speakers, and we were brutally attacked by the sheriffs and the LEPD with tear gas, with billy clubs, and there's footage of that. You could see the whole neighborhood was tear gas. The grandmas, the kids had to flee and run. The young men with their bare hands fought back against the sheriffs, you know. And then there was a rebellion. People call it a riot, but people are angry. They rebelled, and they rebelled all over Whittier Boulevard. Ruben Salazar, who was with KMEX news director at the time, was on the ground covering the rebellion and the brutality. At the end of the afternoon, he took refuge in the Silver Dollar Bar with his cameraman, uh, Restrepo. And they wanted, and then the sheriff came out and started yelling, what's going on? And they tried to come out and they showed their credential. They wanted to come out and, and get out of there. And they pushed him back in and he was shot in the head with a tear gas missile projectile. They call it a flight right, oh, mm. not a tear gas canister. They shot him in the head, they killed him. And we believe that it was, an, it was a planned killing of Ruben because he was very critical of the policies of the government, of the sheriffs, of the mm. LEPD, and of the immigration, the, the, the deportations, the raids. Were you there? I was there on uh, not August 29, 1970. I had already f faced many arrests and beatings and threats to my life, so I had to flee the country. I was living in underground in Mexico on August 29, wow, 1970. Wow. I was there at the first moratorium in December of 69 that the Brown Berets, you know, one student, most of us were working class, Chicanos, Mexican American, Central American, working class youth who were fighting for our rights, for our rights as, as Chicano people here in the United States. Our families came from Mexico, from Central America, all over Latin America, looking for the American dream, and we got the American nightmare as youth. So, you know, we organized the Brown Berets to fight back for our, our rights to fight against racism. We coined the whole slogan about Moreno es bonito, you know, black is beautiful, Moreno es bonito, be proud of who we are. And we didn't want to, you know, blend in to the so-called American dream. We wanted our rights to be proud. And we fought for better education, for better jobs, and against the war in Vietnam. And another big thing, we were, we were embraced by the black liberation movement. You know, whether it was NAACP, the Black Panther Party, uh, Martin Luther King invited us to join the Poor People's Campaign in 1968. I was there for two months in, in Washington, D.C., protesting every day with uh, with uh, Ho uh, Jose William, Reverend Abernathy, Reverend Jesse Jackson, so that's where I met him. And um, 
So the 60s is, is the Chicano power movement, right? We call it Chicano to be proud, right? And now we're saying Chicanx, we want to include the whole family, right. the gay community, the lesbian, bisexual, transgender community, people that d don't, don't identify. That's why we're saying we're calling it Chicanx, right. to be all inclusive, the whole community. Well, I wanted to no. tie in the connection uh, also with Hispanic Heritage Month. We were talking about that. Yeah. Was there a connection between that Chicano, uh, what you called the power yeah. movement, and the Hispanic Heritage Month? Yeah, yeah, right, right. You know, the, the government, the different institutions instituted Hispanic Day, then mm -hmm. Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, okay. during the September 16th. And we always acknowledge and are proud of our roots from Mexico or Central America mm -hmm. and Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala. So that's right? like at the brink when all yeah. this turmoil was happening then. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and the other part of it though, like Nixon came, started the Hispanic, you know, calling us Hispanic, and we said, ah, Hispanic, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, what is Hispanic, you know? You know, as young folk, we say we, we, we are proud of our family, we're proud of, and we understand that. You know, the, the, the Americas were, were invaded by the Spanish, mm -hmm. were colonized. Mm -hmm. So I know we have that background, right? And we speak Spanish, but yeah. we're also proud of our indigenous community, of right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wow. Can, um, yeah. Going back to the Chicano Moratorium um, of what, when, and the Brown Berets and everything mm -hmm. that you were doing, was there ever any coordination with Cesar Chavez? Yes, and, yeah, absolutely. How did, the, how did that relationship no, work? No, absolutely, absolutely. Cesar Chavez and the Chicano Farm Workers were at the Moratorium. They endorsed, you know, the, the, the campaign. and. I was a member of a community service organization. I, I am now, and that's where Cesar got his training. You know, community service organization. That's who I, I work with as an organizer today. And Fred Ross Sololinsky recruited Cesar and Dolores and trained them as organizers. So in absolute, we supported the farm worker struggle, the brown berets. We would go downtown to Central Market to picket, boycott grapes, right? And Fred Ross would say, here's the picket line. Now we're going to peacefully picket, right? And we say, wait a minute, they're bringing all these grapes, they're unloading them. So us as young, angry Chicanos, we started like pulling the crates down and throwing them on the floor. And they said, no, you can't do that. You know, Fred, right? this is a peaceful thing. Well, wait a minute, we believe in peace, but we believe in direct militant action. We didn't advocate violence, but we felt, you know, we organized these daily walkouts in 68 where we have two weeks, those high school students walked out protesting for better schools, and that right? And yeah. that was the premise of the movie Walkout, which was made an HBO original yeah. movie. Uh, a lot of my friends were actually actors in it, uh, oh, yeah. produced by uh, Moctezuma Mo Esparza. Our buddy, our yeah. buddy. He got busted with me in the East LA 13 for the Walkout, by the way. Wow. Was he a student at the time or he, a teacher? Yeah, uh, he was at UCLA. Okay. At, uh, he graduated from Lincoln, but he was already at UCLA. And, uh, how's he doing, know, by the way? What's that? How's how's Moctezuma how's uh, doing? I haven't talked to him in a couple of months, but I, you know, he, he's trying to stay safe with all this COVID thing. You know, I, and uh, I, tr I wanted to have a reunion of the East LA 13, and he said we can't have it in person. Come well, let's do a Zoom. Okay, do the we're, Zoom. We're starting to die. We're starting to no, die. No, but then that's why you got to do yeah, something yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah, everybody next wear a mask. Yeah, yeah. Look, we're gonna take. Uh, God, I, I love, I love uh, all the history. It goes by so I fast. Know. This interview, but it we're does, gonna go to commercial. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk a little bit more. Uh, I know she wants to ask you about like, your, oh my God. Yeah. Your, grand, your grandfather. All right, so let's go to commercial. We'll be right a back. Uh, history lesson with Carlos Montes. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff. All right, we're back here on the zoo with Carlos Montes. Now, like we said, um, during the taping of this, you're actually going to have the Chicanx moratorium. So by the time this is broadcast, it's going to have passed. But we do want to bring in our friend Luis here, who has the poster, mm. um, which has the scene. I wonder if we could zoom in. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, where are we at? Give me a. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, can you focus on that? Should have brought the so that's maybe. the scene that was outside of, of a bodega because what the what the cops use as an excuse is they said there was a shoplifting right well, and with the excuse mm -hmm. of shoplifting 500 officers from the LA Sheriff's Department descended um, they they shot and killed not just Ruben Salazar but an, another young man um, uh, I, 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 my, my name Angel slips Angel Diaz and uh, also Lynn Ward was killed that day right and this is the scene uh, there was a photograph taken by Raul Reese the editor of La Raza magazine mm -hmm. and he happened to see all the sheriffs arriving so he, he st stood there and took photographs and uh, so this is uh, a, 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 a artwork from the black and white photograph but it shows the original silver dollar uh, bar where Ruben and Restrepo took refuge and where uh, the uh, sheriff shot that flight ride missile projectile 
and killed Ruben Salazar by blowing his head open, you know, Jeez. poor guy. Yeah, it was a brutal, uh, you know, and uh, there was an inquest and uh, an investigation and the family sued and, you know, and you know, uh, Ruben originally was from Juarez, Ciudad Juarez, then El Paso, then LA, you know. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that because he, you know, he had gotten married and he was living in Orange County with a, a white lady, you know, was, hey, Ruben, what's up, you know, <laughs> but he was, hey. That I'm, happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, Hi, hey. AK, AK. Is this moratorium yeah. then uh -huh. that's happening on the 29th of yeah. August? Mm -hmm. Is it to remember that incident or is there um, added causes that we're, you're and trying to no, push? No, we're saying the fight continues, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, our people are suffering, we're suffering from poverty, COVID death rates, mm -hmm. uh, police killings, unemployment. And you know, you know, and many of our folks, over 10 million, we don't have uh, documents, residency. So we're so the struggle continues. Yeah. We're demanding legalization, no deportations. You know, we want jobs, we want income. Mm -hmm. You know, because we do all the work in the Southwest. We create the rich, riches of this country, right? So yeah. the struggle, and there's so many killings of young men. It continues. You know, uh, Paul Rea, Anthony Vargas, uh, David Ordaz, Anthony. You know that are killed by LAPD and the sheriffs, especially right now there's a sheriff gang called Los Banditos who go around killing young men so they could be initiated and recruited to the Banditos gang. This reminds me of the, the things that happen in Colombia and Brazil where they- Wait, currently have, Los Banditos. Yeah, here, yeah there's there, a thing yeah. called Google LAPD, okay. LA Sheriff's Department, well, gangs, right? Yeah, gangs. So, now, sheriff now, gang. are these yeah. now are are are, are the are the members of the LA sheriff's gangs? Gang, are they right. Chicano too? Yeah, yeah so they're killing their own people they're to be part of a people. gang of they're sheriffs. They're killing their own people. And there's yeah. a documentary about it in your wow. right? Yes. I mean, what's the I'm documentary the, called? Yeah, let's talk about that. It's called uh, I forgot what it's called. Luis, what's it called? <laughs> what's it called, Luis? Google Deputy. LAS gang. Yeah. So the documentary is called Google LAS Gangs, and I, I actually saw a campaign on Instagram a couple months ago, and so I looked into that. Yeah, so, and by the way, I'm gonna put it straight out. I have three, two different sources, three different sources that Alex Villanueva, the current sheriff, when he was at the East LA Sheriff's Station, he joined Los Banditos. He has not denied it, and he refuses to to show his tattoos if he has. But what is it? I mean, is what? it's it's like a, it's like a gang of of cops right. who be, who 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 are, do they think they're vigilantes and this is the way to deal with crime? So they're gonna go behind the scenes and kill people that they think are criminals? Well, you know what? They don't even do that. They're it's just a, a brutal gang of assassins that uh, and they recruit from within the sheriffs. And to, to be initiated as a prospect, you gotta arrest, you gotta beat and kill. Once you kill, you get your tattoos, you get your ink, and then you become a member of Los Banditos. Mm -hmm. the, you know, just like in, in, like I mentioned, Brazil or Colombia or extrajudicial killings by the authorities. You know, we know that it happens over there and it's happening here in LA, in East LA where I grew up. And I got, I've been, I've been arrested and beat up by the sheriff many times, you know, and, uh, I'm just, you know, lucky Do that I Do you think I that the media, the local media has failed? Because I feel that there was more exposés on this kind of stuff in the past than there is now. Well, you know, it's starting to come come up. Some of the, you know, there, there's some reporters out there that are digging into the, uh, the sheriffs. And by the way, the sheriff East LA station is under investigation by the FBI, as well as the new attorney general uh, of California, uh, Banta. I forget his first name, Banta, and wow. the new attorney general of California. Wow. And, um, and, um, so, but you know what, if you Google, there's a lot of uh, newspaper articles, radio shows regarding the gangs, and they call it Fort Apache. You're, did you ever see the movie Fort Apache? You're too mm -hmm. young to remember, that was a John Wayne thing. You know, or uh, yeah, where the cavalry's out there in, in, in Arizona and against the Apache, the, salvage, the savages, right? So the East LA Sheriff's Station, they call it Fort Apache. Wow. After the rebellion of the August 29, 1970, the original Chicano Marco, the young men fought back and some sheriffs went down. And they have a logo, they have a logo in the door when you walk into the Sheriff's Station of uh, Fort Apache. So I mean, so that's, you know that, that yeah. That's a, that's yeah. That, that's some heavy stuff. That's pretty racism. That's some racism. You yeah. know. No, I mean, I, it's completely irrelevant that you have um, in your your family, whether it's your sometime removed grandparent was part of um, Pancho Villa's yeah. army. Oh wow! And yeah, so you how'd you know that? I, I looked. I looked up ah, some you information. Your, uh, you know right, me, Paisano, yeah, right here. I had to know yeah, some yeah. things. Uh -huh. Your grandfather. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, 
So you have, he would tell you stories of the Mexican Revolution. Yeah. So I was curious uh -huh. to know one of those stories, but I think mm -hmm. what's most impactful here is that like, when this first moratorium happened, you know, it's, it's the young people being fed up about racism, and here we are today, 2021, and we're still fighting the racism. Yeah, still, and it's just yeah. like this fight has been going on for so long, you know? And, it, and it's, I remember hearing about how a lot of Latinos used to fight, uh, were part of like the Vietnam War. But I didn't yeah. learn about that yes. until I went to college, you know? Uh, so speaking yeah. about Hispanic Heritage Month, a lot of this history is just not known. And we it's accept true. racism as a past, but we don't look at how, you know, bodies, people of color mm -hmm. have fought for our rights. You know, no, for no, a while, absolutely. and it's been a long fight, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still happening. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and we won things, we, we, you know, we moved ahead, we won some victories, but then sometimes we get pushed back yeah. again, you know. And I'm glad that you studied that your history, because you went to college, mm -hmm. but most of our youth do That's not, go, do not yeah. go to college, mm -hmm. they, they don't know about it. Well, exactly. That's why we're doing it this year, we, we, you know, or in the past tense, we, we've done the Chicanx. And a lot of young folk, last year there were high school, college students just marching saying Chicana, Chicano, power. And I go, that's so. That's what you want the youth involved, right? Right, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. uh, through the racism, you know, a lot of the young uh, young uh, uh, men and women and, and fam families would kind of like, you know, be, af be afraid of shame, you know, especially the newer immigrants that come to the United States. Calladitos. Yeah, calladitos. Mm -hmm. Me no va a llegar la migra, la policía, mm -hmm. you know, no diga nada. And, oh, ¿qué es esto de los chicanos? No, pues, nos luchamos por nuestros derechos, you uh -huh, know. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of start getting it. Then when they see it in, in college, oh, yeah, that's what it's all about, fighting it's for our movement. rights. It's a whole movement, Fighting for our rights. Carlos, yes, we got to wrap up now. Okay. So can you tell people where they can maybe go online or is there any social media uh, um, handles or anything that you can, yeah, you can follow? Yeah, absolutely. They can go to Centro CSO, you know, whether it's Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, Centro CSO or Chicano Moratorium. And we, the Chicano Moratorium, we had it from last year, the, the different handles. Now, you can call me or text me, 213-712-0370. <laughs> I have no have problem. Have you written a book? Yeah, yeah. I've done a video. I've done, I've no, got, you need to write no, a book. I, 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 gotta, I, I gotta write a book. You gotta you know? write I'm a book. I'm gonna do a movie. No, I'm gonna do a video. Who's gonna read a book? No, no, still, no we're gonna do yeah. a movie. We're All gonna right, do a movie. Let, let us help out on that. <laughs> Carlos, I wanna thank you for coming. I wanna no, thank, thank you for you. educating thank us. You. Thank uh, you so much. We're, gonna, we're, you. We're, we're with you in spirit, that's for thank sure. You. And uh, I hope people can check out the Chicano Moratorium. Uh, Google LASD gangs and learn more about what's happening right now because there's still a fight to be had. And you're someone, um, you're a treasure, man. You're, you're, you're a treasure of wisdom and history, and it's important to learn from someone like you. So thanks for coming. Thank you very much.